Hey, welcome back to Postal Barbecue. I'm Jabin Postal, and today at the grill, I'm gonna be cooking up an amazing steak sandwich that you're gonna love for sure. It doesn't take a lot of time, it's cost effective, and best of all, it tastes absolutely delicious. So just like always, I'm gonna put all the show notes as well as the full recipe in the description box below for you. So make sure to click down there to see everything that you need for this recipe. Also, if you like what we're doing on this channel, consider subscribing for more great barbecue recipes, tutorials, and reviews. Now than that, let's get into the cook. As I said, welcome back to Pulse Barbecue. I appreciate you being here. Today at The Grill, I'm gonna be making something that's been on my mind for a couple months. It's a steak sandwich. If you've never had a steak sandwich before, they're fairly simple to put together. They don't take a lot of time. And best of all, you can kind of customize them uh, to whatever you're feeling. So if you're uh, thinking something more savory, you can go that route. If you're thinking something more fresh, uh, by all means, go that route as well sandwiches you can always customize to your flavor and so that's what makes them so fun so today what i have here is uh, some strip loin and this is about a four inch thick strip loin which i'm going to cut in half uh, before i cook it on the kettle grill and then we got a ciabatta bun uh, some arugula some red onions uh, some pickled jalapeno some cheddar cheese and then some condiments just to go on it and so this is sort of the flavors that i've been craving for the past few weeks uh even longer than that what i'm going to do is i want to prepare everything before I cut into the meat uh, so that I don't have to switch the cutting board and switch knives and all that stuff and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ciabatta bun and so that's what this is here I'm just going to slice it right in half there we go just like that and so I will be toasting this a little bit later but again, I just want to make sure I have everything prepared uh, for this uh, before I get cutting into the strip loin. All right, I have a red onion here, and this is what I want to use for this sandwich because I'm going to be cooking it down in the cast iron, and I want a little bit of that sweetness to come out. I also have a little bit of balsamic vinegar, some uh, sugar, and a little bit of water just to help make that process go a little bit faster. And so what I want to do is I want to uh, slice this uh, as thin as I can those off. Just gonna peel this apart. And I'm gonna be using one onion per sandwich today and I'm also going to take just a little bit off before I get it into that cast iron because I want to have a little bit of extras just to top on top of the sandwich. I'm just gonna place this off to the side here and then I'm gonna slice these down. And again I want these fairly thin. And then I'm just going to rough chop them uh, just into smaller pieces. I don't need to dice it. I just need to uh, have some smaller bits. That looks pretty good. All right, that's all the preparation I'm going to be doing uh, outside of the meat. And so I'm going to get these onto the grill because I want to just caramelize them a little bit. Uh, and so they're going to take probably about 15 to 20 minutes just to cook down to a consistency that I'm looking for uh, for this sandwich. So let's get them onto the grill. You can see I have my cast iron just sort of preheating a little bit. And I have this uh, garlic infused olive oil. This stuff is so good. I'm going to place that onto the cast iron. There we go. And I am using this as well in my mayo. It's like garlic infused mayo. And that's just basically using that uh, garlic infused olive oil mixed with that mayo. And so let's get these onions onto that cast iron. And then, like I said, I have a few other things I want to put into uh, the onions, so I have a little bit of water. This is probably about three tablespoons of water. I have about two tablespoons of some balsamic vinegar. I have a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. And then last thing, I put a little bit of the mad cow beef rub in there. Just a little bit. I'm going to get this stirred around. Go and get that lid closed back up. And so I'm just gonna let those onions just sort of hang out in that grill. I'll come back and I'm gonna stir them a little bit because uh, I want them just to soften down quite nicely. So let's go ahead and prepare our steak. And this is about a four inch thick ribeye steak or as they labeled it, ribeye roast. I mean, I saw it, I'm like, I can just cut this in half and save a little bit of cash on it. So that's what I got here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it right down the middle and I'm basically using the line that it was uh, twined with. There, right down the middle. 
And just like that, we have these two uh, really nice looking strip loin steaks. And just look at all that marbling in there. And so this is what you wanna look for when you're going for a steak. Uh, this is gonna make it more juicy, more tender, and just add a ton of extra flavor, the more of that marbling that's in there. All right, let's prepare the steaks for the grill. And today I'm gonna be cooking these steaks hot and fast, which is a little bit different than what I may normally do because cooking these steaks is supposed to be fast because we really don't wanna be wasting a lot of time to make the sandwich because this is something that you could even do on your lunch break if you had that little extra time. And so this is why I'm doing it hot and fast so we don't waste a lot of time uh, cooking that reverse sear method. So like I said, I have this garlic infused olive oil. I'm gonna place that on the steaks, rub that around. And then, like I said, I have my Mad Cow Beef Rub today. This stuff goes incredibly well on steaks. And so I'm just going to place that uh, on the outside. Make sure we get all the sides. There we go, those steaks are nicely seasoned. And so the only thing that we're waiting for is for the onions to finish uh, cooking the way that I like them for the sandwich. And so let's go ahead and give them a stir. All right, these onions are probably gonna take another 10 to 12 minutes to finish cooking uh, down and get nice and soft. And so I'm just gonna continue to cook them, give them a stir every once in a while, and we'll come back when it's time to put these steaks onto the grill. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes since I put the onions onto the grill and I think they're done. Let's take a look. Oh, those smell so good. Gonna give them a quick taste. Mmm. -hmm. Yeah, that's what I want to see. There's still a little bit of crunch, but they picked up a lot of that flavor from the sugar and that balsamic vinegar. These are exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna get this off to the side of the grill for now, and then I'm gonna mix together all of my remaining coals. It's because I want them to be roaring hot for uh, the sear of these steaks, because if you don't have hot coals, you're not gonna get that crust and that sear uh, that's gonna add a ton of flavor uh, in this sandwich. And so I got those mixed together. I'm gonna let those go for about three or four minutes until they're incredibly hot. As I said, today I'm gonna to be front searing these steaks. This is more your traditional way of cooking steaks. Uh, you know, you put it over the direct coals, you flip it a few times, then pull it off and let it finish coming up to temperature. It doesn't take very long, and that's why people love to do it this way. And so, like I said, I'm gonna be placing it directly over those hot coals, and today I'm gonna to be using the cold grate technique, which basically uh, means I'm putting the steaks on the cool side, then spinning the grate around over those direct coals, and then I'm gonna be flipping them one minute on each side twice until you get that perfect perfect crust as well as the temperature that I'm looking for. And so let's get these onto the grill opposite the Sloan's here. And then I'm gonna spin these around and then start my timer for one minute. All right, there's our first minute. There's our second minute, spin that great. There's minute number three. We'll spin that great one last time. Ooh, just look at that sear. And I can just do one last flip on this guy. At this point, I wanna just make sure I'm not overshooting my temperatures. I know it's gonna be a little bit low, uh, but let's go ahead and just probe it. We got 75 degrees and 74 degrees. And so these still have a few more minutes. And you know, at this point, I wanna just make sure I have a good crust. I'm not overcooking the steak whatsoever, uh, but I want that crust. And so doing a last few flips on these steaks uh, isn't gonna hurt the process. All right, just take a look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna remove that one from the flames as well. And just like before, I'm just gonna confirm uh, what my temperatures are at. We got 84, 
and 82. These still have a few more minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close up the grill and I'm gonna let those just come up to temperature. It's probably only gonna take a few more minutes uh, to get up to about 127, which is my preferred done this. And at that point, we'll get them back out of the grill and start slicing them up to make our sandwiches. Got 127. 127. Okay, so with these both hitting around 127 degrees, I'm gonna pull them off the grill. I'm just gonna place them onto the side here. I'm gonna let this rest just for a couple minutes while I toast my chia bada bun. You know, just spin this around a little bit. Grab my bun, and like I said, I already cut this, or like you saw, and I'm gonna place that directly over those hot coals. And this is only gonna take a few seconds uh, to get a little bit of browning on that bun. There's the one. And there's the two. All right, I'm gonna get that off the side. Okay, let's cut into the steak. I'm gonna go for the big guy because it looks absolutely delicious. So I'm just gonna cut this. A little bit of an angle. And let's take a look at how we did. Guys, just look at that. This looks incredible. I'm gonna go for a little sneak taste here. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm hmm that steak alone is incredible uh, let's finish slicing it up all right let's get to building the sandwich and so I'm gonna start uh, by placing some of this garlic mayo like I said it's just some mayonnaise with some of that garlic infused olive oil followed by my caramelized onions All right, now I'm gonna grab all this steak. I'm gonna place that onto my bun. Maybe take a couple of these guys off. But we're not quite done yet. I'm gonna grab a couple pieces of aged cheddar cheese and place that on there like that. And then I'm gonna get this onto the grill again. And at this point, you have two options. You can either just close up the grill and take a couple minutes for that cheese to melt, or if you have a, a flamethrower or a torch, you can grab that. And I'm gonna just torch this. Just look at that, oh my goodness. I'm gonna place that right on top of those juices, let that bread sort of soak up some of those steak juices. And then from here, I'm just gonna finish building this sandwich. I got a little bit of arugula placed on top of that. I have a few of those remaining red onions. And then I have some pickled jalapenos. Again, go ahead and uh, put on whatever you prefer on your steak sandwich. Uh, this is what I'm going for today. And then lastly, I got some coarse Dijon mustard. I'm gonna put a little bit of this onto this top bun. I'm gonna place that directly on top, press down a little bit and just take a look at this. This looks phenomenal. I'm gonna give it a, a little cut. Guys, just take a look at that. You can see it's perfectly medium rare on that steak and the bread is crunchy. There's so many great flavors going on in here and I can't wait to go for the taste test. All right, guys, I can't wait any longer. I need to go in for this taste test because it looks absolutely phenomenal. I can't believe how incredible that steak turned out, first of all. It's just perfect, medium, rare. Here we go. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's so good. 
I wish you were here just to taste this because it's phenomenal. You know, everything works with this sandwich. First of all, that steak is cooked to perfection. But one of the things that comes out right away with the taste test is the arugula, the pickled jalapeno, and of course those onions. Everything is working together so great on this sandwich. You know, if you've never tried a steak sandwich like this before, make sure to give it a try. It doesn't take a lot of time, as you can see. Um, you front sear the steaks, you cook some onions, you build your sandwich, and then before you know it, you're ready to feast into that delicious steak sandwich. I'm gonna go ahead, finish this one up, but I hope you give it a try, because I know you're gonna love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's how you make that incredible steak sandwich for your next meal. You're going to love it for sure. Hey, if you want to see more barbecue videos just like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. Also, special thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting this channel every single week. So until next time, keep that fire lit and get cooking.